In this experiment, we will collimate a laser beam using the autocollimation method. Now this experiment uses uh, three basic components. Uh, we have here a, a microscope objective uh, mounted on a microscope objective holder, mounted on a three inch post and post holder. I have a two inch post and post holder that is holding a, a bar type lens holder. I also have this mounted on a, a, a base platform here. Uh, and what I've done is I've taken an index card and I've taped it to the bar type lens holder and I've drawn myself a target that is geometrically centered uh, along the, op the axis of the, the bar, uh, the uh, post holder. I also have a biconvex lens, uh, the focal length of which uh, I am unsure and that's as part of the lab we're going to try to kind of figure that out. Um, but basically what this um, what we're going to do with this lens is collimate the laser beam. Now most lenses uh, used for this application, uh, at least with regard to your kit, are in the 10 to 20 centimeter um, focal length range and I'm thinking that's probably what this lens actually is also. Uh, and I have it mounted in here uh, basically using the, the uh, V groove like that and the second B group on top applying a little pressure to it. Okay, so <clears throat> the first thing we want to do, if we can just pan back a little bit, is level our laser beam. Usually in most of these experiments it's always good to start off with a level laser beam. And what I have is a helium neon laser, I'm going to turn it on. Okay, and what I want to do is make sure that the, the laser is level in the horizontal axis and it's also aligned in this axis here and I'm going to use the screw holes as a guide. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the, the, the level here with a ruler and we're about five and a quarter inches here and if I go down to the other side of the, the breadboard we're about five and a quarter also so this was fairly level to start off with. Now one of the things I want to do is using my index card notice how the laser beam is centered on the crosshair okay and I want to keep it that way okay so as I as I move this crosshair I'm going to tilt it slightly as I move the crosshair across the table I just want to make sure that the position of that beam doesn't change and in this situation uh, it really doesn't uh, if it does okay what I want to do is make sure that I adjust the position of this laser in this direction here so that it is centered on that crosshair okay and just to, to secure that target, I'm going to take a, a, a quarter twenty set screw and just kind of tighten this down because we're going to use this target uh, as we're doing the auto collimation process. Now, uh, given that this laser beam is aligned in this direction, the next thing I want to do is expand it. Okay, part of the reason for expanding and collimating a laser beam is that the larger a, a beam is, the diameter of that beam. Um, the farther that beam will travel without diverging, uh, or divergence is directly proportional to uh, the, um, the, the amount of collimation of that laser beam. So the more collimated or more parallel a laser beam is, the less it will tend to spread out over a certain distance. Also the larger you expand the beam, the less it will spread out. That also has implications with regard to materials processing, for example. When you try to focus a laser beam down to a small spot, the more collimated and larger a beam is, the smaller the focus spot size will be. So just keep that in mind as we're doing this. Now what I want to do is take this uh, microscope objective and, you, and bolt it to the, to the breadboard and we're going to use this to expand the beam. Now the fact that we've fixed the target, okay, we want the expanded laser beam to be centered on that target. Okay, so what I'm going to do, if you can see the target over there, uh, I'm just going to adjust the position both uh, in the X and Y direction so that it sits right centered with the target. Okay, so right there we look like we're fairly centered and that's good. Now, the next step is to take your lace, I mean your, um, your biconvex lens and place it somewhere in front of the in between the, the microscope objective and the target. And what we want to do 
if, if it's, it hasn't already been aligned, okay, if you do this, you might be off axis a little bit like that. Okay, you can see we're not quite centered there. What we want to do is center the post and post holder over this, these screws, the screw holes, and adjust the height of the lens so that we are centered. Okay, so right now we're centered. We are centered, the laser beam is expanding, okay, and it's being collected by this positive lens, and it's actually collimating to some extent that light, okay. The thing that we don't know is, you know, how well is that laser collimated? Because if I just take this off and I, and I move it, okay, notice how the beam, as I move away, expands. Okay, so the beam started out that size and ends up over here being expanded. Now, if I adjust the position of this second lens, I can make that spot bigger or smaller. And one way to determine or to the way to cut make sure that this beam stays the same diameter regardless of this of the uh, distance away that we are is by using a technique called auto collimation now what happens in auto collimation is that if the folk the back focal length of the collimating lens coincides with the front focal point of the expanding lens then that beam will be collimated. So what we're going to do to check that out is we're going to take our target and what I'm going to do is I'm going to position it about eight millimeters just off axis about eight millimeters in front of the microscope objective. Okay so this this plane is co-aligned with the focal point of that lens. Okay and what I'm going to use that for is to uh, reflect the light back, which is the principle of autocollimation. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, plane mirror and we're going to use it to reflect the light coming through the lens back just off axis. And if you can zoom into this here, you can see the spot there. Okay, we're going to zoom it right off axis there and we're going to look at the size of this spot as we ad adjust the position of the collimating lens. So if you pan back just a little bit to catch the uh, collimating lens, okay, that's good. Uh, what I'm going to do is adjust the position of the collimating lens to find the point at which that focus spot reaches uh, is basically as sharp as possible. And we look like we have it about there. If I go a little bit farther, it starts to expand again. If I come back this way, it starts to expand again. So what I want to do is find the spot at which the reflected light just comes to a point off axis. And what's happening here is the light as it's being expanded by the microscope objective, it's spreading out, coming through the lens, being collimated, and then it's retracing its steps basically and if we can get it to coincide with the focal point of the microscope objective, uh, then we should be fairly collimated. Okay. And again, you want to make sure that you are aligned with your the axis of, of, of the screws here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bolt this down at the position that I just determined hopefully is the right spot for a collimation. And what we're going to do is just we're going to check that collimation just by doing a visual inspection of the light as it, as it travels from the laser. So as we can see, the laser beam starts out probably about one, one and a half millimeters in diameter. And by using the microscope objective, we're able to expand that beam out to a larger spot. And then we're going to collimate that again. And what we're going to see as I move this away is that the beam diameter is not going to change. The farther I go, it still stays uh, relatively the same diameter. Okay, That is a collimated beam.